This is a video to complement the Pole Support installation policy. This method of testing for leakage is only approved for this pole support procedure. Before you begin any work on the pole, check for stray voltage using an approved tester, making sure it is in date, working and in good condition. If you find the pole is live, stop work immediately, keep a safe distance from the pole and inform network control. In every quarter, as indicated on the graphic, Test the pole from the ground up and then approach closer and test from the higher level coming down. Make sure you reach the height of where the pole pikes will be placed. Retest the pole vault to ensure it still works. Once you have confirmed the pole is not live, carry out an inspection for potential hazards or defects and confirm it is a suitable candidate for the installation. Then carry out a ground survey referencing service drawings and CAT scan results. If services are identified, it is not suitable to continue working and you must stop immediately. Select the correct support for the pole installation. Care should be taken when handling trusses with a minimum of two people lifting and approved anti-crush gloves worn at all times. All supports are stamped with corresponding truss sizes. Support the pole using the approved pole pike method, installing four pikes opposite each other and spaced evenly apart. Ensure that the pikes are in date and when on hard surfaces, use rubber matting under the feet of each pike to prevent slippage. Pole pikes should only be removed once the support is at the right depth and all bands are securely in place. In line with the overhead conductors, manually excavate the ground in front of the pole to a depth of approximately 60 centimeters. Then raise and position the support against the pole. Inspect the winch system and winch pole to make sure they are working and in good condition. Secure the pull down winch system on the opposite side from the support approximately 80 centimeters above ground. Before securing, make sure the chain binding hook is unscrewed fully. While holding the winch in place, feed the chain through the steel dolly and wrap it around the pole. The rollers must rest on the support and the chain should be horizontally level. Finally, connect the chain to the winch hook and tighten until the support is in the correct position and firmly against the pole. Erect the winch pole with the base approximately 2 meters away from the pole. Ensure the base is positioned on flat and level ground. When on hard surfaces, use a rubber mat to prevent slippage. Mark on the pole approximately 180 centimeters from ground level or half of the support for the final position of the top of the support when driven into the ground. Before use, inspect the air supply system. 
Attach the pneumatic hammer to the winch pole. Caution should be taken when raising the hammer making sure no one is within the drop area. With the hammer raised, position the tension roller behind the pole with the guide chain to prevent the hammer from swaying. And attach the pull down winch cable to the hammer's tension roller. Winch the hammer to a height so that it sits directly on top of the pole support. Then adjust the winch as necessary to ensure the hammer plate is gripping the support in prep for operation. If the hammer doesn't reach above the support, lower it and move the winch pole closer. Operate the pneumatic hammer with one person releasing the winch pole to enable a downward motion and the other person operating the pull down winch until you reach the marked depth. If the support meets a pole block or obstacle, stop and carefully lower the hammer and remove the support. Manually excavate again and reposition the support to miss the pole block or obstacle. Once you have reached the marked depth, carefully lower the hammer. To cut the banding, measure the circumference of the pole and add 50 centimeters. Cut four bands to this length using the band cutter. Be sure to always wear anti-crush gloves and safety glasses. Once cut, bend back approximately five centimeters of each band to form a dead end loop. Slide two seals onto each band so the overlapped side of each seal is facing in the same direction as the loop. Ensure the top of the seal overlap is face down to prevent water ingress in the seal. Mark approximately 6cm from the top of the support for the top band and 38cm from the ground for the top of the bottom bands. Starting from the top, wrap around the band and pass it through the seals so that the flat side of the seal is facing away from the pole. Shift the seals so they are in line with the truss and use a pneumatic tensioner to tighten the band. Then apply the pneumatic crimper and ensure each seal is given two crimps. And break away the excess band. Repeat this process for the second band using a seal to measure the gap from the first band. Then apply the other two bands at the measurement at the bottom of the support with a seal sized gap between them. Once all bands have been secured, you can remove the pull down winch system and pole pikes. Place a covering cap over the top of the support using nails in the pre-drilled holes to secure in place. Fill in the excavated hole back to previous ground level. Finally, inspect the truss for installation defects and remove waste from the site. If any sign has been damaged or obscured by the truss like the pole number or danger of death sign, relocate and replace them. Also remember to install an Osmo sign and recategorize the pole from a D to an S pole.